Good morning to you all. Thank you for joining me today for the morning reflection. I'm Teresa Gallagher from Letterkenny, County Donegal. Just listen to some of these words. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. All attributes, patience. And in order to exercise them, we need forgiveness and toleration. And the result of that is that we create love, which in turn produces unity and enables us to be at peace. So we become one body and we become grateful for our peace of mind. In today's reading from St. Paul, he tells us that we are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then, you must put on these clothes on yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any of you have a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all of these qualities add love. Love binds all things together in perfect unity. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions that you make. For it is to this peace that God has called you together into the one body. And be thankful. Christ's message in all its richness must live in your hearts. Teach and instruct each other with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns and songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. Everything you do or say then should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks through him to God the Father. I've chosen this reading today because it's about family. I belong to a big family of 12. Her great parents both lived into their 90s. Six boys, six girls. And we all knew who we were. We knew who our parents were. And we we're all known and recognised by the family of which we're part. In Ireland, if someone meets you for the first time, all they want to know is, who are you? Where do you live? Who's your father? Have you brothers and sisters? And so it goes. People are always trying to fit us into a place or a family. And you find this particularly with immigrants. You know, they want to know who they're connected to and love to share it. And in any family, we have a variety of personalities, characters, differences, shared values, different types of relationships and so on. But normally, no matter what the difference is, <coughs> we'll still embrace each other as our own. And when the chips are down, they're our family and we love and protect them as best we can. Parents have a particular role in this physical, emotional and in terms of values. Yet each person within the family makes his or her own choice at the end of the day and live with the consequences of that choice. Parents by nature can only wish and will, but they cannot compel. So this analogy fits in very much with the reading today. We are told that we belong to God's family. We are told that Jesus Christ is the image of the unseen God and we are the believers. We are the loved and chosen members of his family. Paul gives us today a template of what it means to belong to this Christian family. It's no small order, but at the end of the day, each one of us can only do our best. And believe me, God knows that that is good enough. None of us are perfect. 
We are told we must clothe ourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And I'm sure we all have those to different or lesser degrees. Paul doesn't leave it there, however. He lets us know how we can implement these things. He gives us examples of how we can exercise these Christian godlike qualities. He says, be tolerant with one another. Forgive each other, even when one or other of or both are in the wrong. He even gives the example of Christ, who says, forgive one another, just as I have forgiven you. Wouldn't it be a, we be in a very bad way if the Lord held a grudge or said, I'll wait until you're perfect. So we don't have to be perfect, we just have to strive. Often the pain of injustice and hurt can be so bad that we feel we can't forgive fully. But Jesus leaves us with no ifs or buts. Or he never questions who should put out the hand of forgiveness first. It doesn't mean we won't recognise the residue of pain and injustice. But the challenge is that when we are driven by the example of Jesus, it can fill us with a peace beyond all knowing, beyond all hurt, beyond all pain. It's based on the peace that binds us together as one Christian family. As a result, the richness of Christ's message can then find a space to live in our hearts. Now I'm going to do a little reflection with you. Uh, there's a part of us that longs to be still, just to look at the things in ourselves for a short time each day. Now more than ever in this crazy world, we need to stop. We need to take note and account of what our lives are all about. Jesus always encouraged his disciples to go, go aside, he'd say, rest for a while. He was aware of the pressures they were carrying. Scripture even tells us that after creating the world, God rested. And I am going to invite you to do the same. I'm just going to bring you into a little short exercise. So if you wish to relax in your chair or on the floor or on the bed for a few minutes. Just close your eyes, and tune into your breathing. Aware of the conflicts in family, in your own family maybe, and around you and in society. Think of them and aware of the innate love that we have for those with whom we're in contact. Just look inside and be aware of your own beating heart around these people that you love. Now I want you to be aware of your heart beating. Just feel if there is any block there around your heart that hurts you emotionally. Just be aware of it for a moment. Now I want you to let go of all that negative emotion. Hand it over to Jesus. Listen to his words. He says to us each day, come to me, come aside and rest. All you who are weary and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. I remember once my mother telling me in terms of rest, 
She didn't know where to go or what to do because life was difficult at the time, being the mother of 12 children. And she told me she was resting in the grass and wondering where to turn to or how to deal with issues. And suddenly a feather fell down very gently and touched the side of her cheek. And she told me at that moment, she knew everything was going to be all right. You too know God is in charge. Everything will be all right. Thank you so much for listening to me. Slán Goodbye for now.